The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of National Revenue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is my distinct pleasure to rise in this House to speak on Budget 2017 and to talk about the positive impact that it will have in my riding of Brampton West. Before I begin, Mr. Speaker, I want to take this opportunity and thank the Minister of Finance for, for putting forward a budget that continues to help the middle class families and those that are working hard to join it. Mr. Speaker, building on our ambitious last budget, I have seen firsthand the impact that it, it had on families in Brampton West and right across Canada. One of the things that we did as a government is one of the first things we did uh, as a government is to lower taxes on our middle class and raise it for the top 1%. Our Canada Child Benefit has helped thousands of families in my riding of Brampton West. I hear this constantly from my constituents who have benefited from this policy, whether it has helped them enroll their children in summer camps or even put, table, even put food on their table. This is real change, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Budget 2017 is the next step in our government's ambitious plan to make smart investments that will create jobs, grow our economy, and provide more opportunities for middle-class Canadians. Mr. Speaker, I will be focusing on three aspects of the budget that are very important to my riding of Brampton West. These include health care, especially mental health and the uh, caregiver tax credit, housing, and finally, our youth. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to speak about a particular family that I met in my constituency office a few months ago, the Dillon family. They were, they were going through a very pressing time. They were extremely stressed knowing that Mr. Dillon's aging mother needed constant care. They told me about how Mr. Dillon had to quit his job so he could provide support to his mother in, in, the, in her deteriorating state. The cost for one income earner not being able to work was great. We are seeing a similar situation today with families all across Canada. Providing support to families in this situation is crucial, Mr. Speaker. As a registered nurse and as a member of Parliament for Brampton West, I'm proud to be part of a government that recognizes these extremely important challenges and takes action. Budget 2017 proposes to invest $6 billion over 10 years to provide Canadians with improved access to home, community, and palliative care services, as well as more support for caregivers. This means that more people will get the care that they need in their homes, Mr. Speaker, and that more families will be getting more support from their government. Right now, Canadians who are caring for loved ones face a caregiver credit system that is very complex and difficult for families to navigate. So we have simplified it by introducing the Canada Caregiver Credit. This new non-refundable credit will provide greater support to those in need and will apply to caregivers whether or not they live with the family member who is receiving the care. This measure will provide $310 million in additional tax relief and will support families struggling to take care of their loved ones. I know how significant this investment is for families like the Dillon family in my community. Another reality that is far too true in our community, in our country, is a lack of support system available for mental health. Mr. Speaker, I had the opportunity to participate on a ride along with a Peel police officer in Brampton West last summer. And during the one night shift, Mr. Speaker, we did about 15 calls. And 11 of those calls, Mr. Speaker, were related to mental health. That is a sad reality in our communities. Whilst great strides have been made to improve our understanding of mental illness and its impact on people's lives, wait times to see a mental health specialist in certain regions of our country range to up to 18 months. That is just completely unacceptable, Mr. Speaker. That is why I'm extremely proud of Budget 2017 that will invest $5 billion over 10 years to support mental health initiatives. These investments will have a significant impact in Brampton West and all across Canada. Improved access to mental health supports will result in improved health outcomes and shorter wait times for hundreds and thousands of Canadians. Mr. Speaker, we know this is just a start, and I would like to thank my colleague, the Honourable Minister of Health, on her leadership that she has shown on these very important issues. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to now address how Budget 2017 will improve access for Canadians to housing that is safe and affordable. 
It is an issue I hear about almost constantly in my constituency office. The rising cost of housing in Brampton results in many people not having access to adequate housing. The wait times in order to get access to subsidized unit within the region of Peel is currently seven and a half years, which is one of the longest wait times in Ontario. I hear about seniors not being able to afford housing because they live on a fixed income. I hear about low-income families not being able to access social housing because of the long wait times, as I just stated. Mr. Speaker, I need to reiterate that all Canadians need and deserve housing that is safe and affordable. Without it, Canadians feel less secure, secure making it harder to accomplish every other goal from raising healthy children to pursuing education, getting a good job, and opportunities. Budget 2017, Mr. Speaker, would make a historic investment of $11.2 billion over 11 years to build, renew, and repair Canada's affordable housing and to ensure that all Canadians have their housing needs met. This would include $5 billion that would go towards our new National Housing Fund to address housing issues in our cities, including co-op housing. An additional $2.1 billion over the next 11 years would go towards a homelessness prevention strategy, working with communities across the country to combat homelessness and to provide support to mitigate underlying issues that lead to homelessness. Mr. Speaker, finally, I'd like to turn towards an issue that is very close to my heart, our youth. Mr. Speaker, I'm very proud of our Brampton West Youth Council, who continues to advocate for issues that are important for the youth in my community. One of the issues that they have continued to raise is about uncertainty about their future, about lack of support to pay for their college or university, and then about finding good, well-paying jobs after their education. Mr. Speaker, I'm also very proud to report that Brampton will be home to a new Ryerson University campus soon. And that's why investments in post-secondary education are essential to my community in Brampton West. Budget 2017 is investing in our make post-secondary education, making it more accessible and affordable, building the skills for tomorrow, and helping youth gain work experience that they need to succeed. We are investing $12.5 million over six years for a pilot project to explore new ways to increase awareness for the Canada Learning Bond and to reduce barriers to access among low-income families. We're also investing $59.8 million over four years and $17 million per year ongoing to expand eligibility for Canada student loans and grants for students in part-time studies to help even more students qualify to to student financial assistance. To build the skills of tomorrow, Mr. Speaker, we are committing to providing 10.8 million over five years for hands-on learning experiences to introduce diverse groups of young Canadians to the power and potential of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics fields, as well as investing 50 million over two years for a program to provide coding and digital skills education to more young Canadians. To help youth gain work experience, Mr. Speaker, there will be an investment of $395 million over three years in the youth employment strategy for additional employment and skills development opportunities for our youth. These investments will ensure that our youth is able to access every opportunity possible now and in the future, Mr. Speaker and I'm extremely proud of that. Mr. Speaker, these are just some of the initiatives in Budget 2017 that will have a significant impact in my community of Brampton West. I'm very proud of our government, our finance minister, and our prime minister that really listen to Canadians and put forward a budget that has taken steps to address the real challenges and issues that every Canadian is facing every day. I'm proud to support this budget on behalf of the constituents of Brampton West, and I hope that my honourable colleagues from all across will do the same. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? The honourable member for Yorkton Melville. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm not sure if the member was in the House this morning when the Minister of Finance was giving his rationale for why they needed to invoke closure on the budget. 
One of his reasons was that Canadians are becoming impatient. They're wanting to see this budget take effect. I would have to say that they are not impatient. They are actually extremely apprehensive. And the middle class and those working hard to join it know that they are facing greater debt because of the actions of this government. They know that their Canadian child benefit that supposedly out, uh, is more is actually outweighed now by the loss of tax credits, the increase of taxes to small businesses, the increase in fees, and they know that the tax break to middle income Canadians that was done on the backs of the 1% of the wealthy that was supposed to be revenue neutral is costing Canada, is costing taxpayers $1 billion annually. So they are very concerned about issues with this budget. They are apprehensive not impatient. Controls on the parliamentary budget officer, concerns over that infrastructure bank, commitments now in the air to DND that we don't see where the money is, and now 1.3 trillion in borrowing. How will this budget impact the apprehension of Canadians? Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Revenue. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank my honourable colleague for her question. She asked many questions, but I'll try to summarize it as I, and I, as I did in my speech, Mr. Speaker, and I have described and discussed in my speech all the significant steps that our government is taking to address the real challenges that Canadians are facing every day and how badly we need these changes implemented. So my constituents in Brampton West and Canadians all across can benefit from these significant changes. And I, again, I just encourage all members in this House uh, to vote in favour of our budget. Uh, this is what Canadians expect of us, Mr. Speaker. That is why Canadian that, that's what Canadians elected us to do. And we'll continue to work extremely hard for all Canadians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Rosemont, La Petite Patrie. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank my colleague for her remarks. I don't understand, however, why the government is trying to shut down debate on this with such bad news for Canadians. I'd like to un understand this change in strategy. The Liberals said during the election campaign that they were going to be borrowing at uh, low rates uh, to invest in infrastructure, public infrastructure. They never said that they would turn to private sector funding privatization of our infrastructure. So why given 7 to 9 percent returns to these investors, so when they said they were going to borrow at low rates and f invest in infrastructure? The, revenue the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Speaker, again, once again, I want to thank my Honourable colleague for his question. Mr. Speaker, unlike the previous government, our goal is to support our municipal and our provincial partners, to support the infrastructure that they need. We have put forward an ambitious plan of more than $180 billion that we will be investing in our infrastructure. That includes investing in our housing, childcare spaces, our public transit, and clean infrastructure. I was very proud to announce with all my Brampton colleagues an investment of over $30 million in the city of Brampton a few months ago, which has helped the city get more buses, build more shelters, and has tremendously uh, impacted the commuters and the residents of Brampton West. Our government, Mr. Speaker, believes that we can do more for our municipal and provincial sectors by engaging the private sector, that's, and that's exactly what we're doing, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The comments? The Honourable Member for Saanich Gulf Islands. Thank you. And my Honourable Colleague for Brampton West, I'm going to address my comments to the unacceptable use of time allocation on this debate and put to her and hopefully to her caucus the reality that when time allocation is used on an important bill like a budget implementation bill, the consequence is that as a member of parliament with equal rights to the citizens of my riding as the citizens of Brampton West, Saanich Gulf Islands says citizens don't entertain second class status. But unfortunately, I've been informed that due to time allocation, I will not be allowed to speak on this bill. I will not have an opportunity at this moment to speak on this bill. We heard the Minister for Finance say that a number of Conservatives have spoken, a number of New Democrats have spoken. And I'd just like to ask the Honourable Member if she, if she can uh, find it in her heart to ask her caucus to give up one of their speaking slots so that I might have a chance to comment on this bill. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, the Minister of National Revenue. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank my honourable colleague uh, for her question and for all uh, the hard work that she does on behalf of her, her constituents. But as I said, Mr. Speaker, uh, you know, and I described and I discussed the budget in my speech, a significant step that our government is taking to address the real challenges that are facing Canadians every single day. And again, Mr. Speaker, I encourage that we pass this bill uh, and it goes to committee and then we hear from witnesses and we hear and, you know, let committee do the important work that they're uh, mandated to do. And uh, I, I'm not sure too much about the procedure, Mr. Speaker, but I think there may be a possibility in the third reading uh, for, to have the, the honourable member to speak. Thank you again, Mr. Speaker. Resuming debate.